Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. We're continuing the Everyday Carry series. In the last video, I showed my Tier 1 EDC, and today we're going to talk about Tier 2. Now, this is where it gets tricky. When it comes to Everyday Carry, we really don't actually need to talk about it any further than Tier 1 because that is everyday carry in its truest sense of the word. But when we talk about doing another tier or two, uh, what we're talking about is adding on to you know, that base readiness that we've already got. And what I have found over the years is I've tried to do this before, is there simply is no way to come up with something that works for everyone once you get into tier two. It is going to depend greatly on you, where you live, uh, what your risks are, uh, skill. I mean, it's tier two is where it really, really branches out. And there's one other issue when you get to this point too, which you're going to see here in a minute. And that is, it's very difficult to find that perfect balance between having an extra level of readiness and having too much because we're all of the preparedness mindset and it's very easy to go overboard. And you can't do that because if you're carrying too much stuff, then it becomes, you know, prohibitive. Uh, you can always tell who's, you know, starting out, you know, I don't know that I've seen any of these videos in some time, but back in the day, you used to come across videos on YouTube all the time. It's like, this was my bug out bag. And the dude would have like this tactical backpack that had like, 800 pounds worth of stuff in it and trust me you're not going to want to freaking carry that so what i have here today is going to be slightly i thought i was being you know simple but it still in my opinion was leaning more on the heavy side so this is more of what i would consider that extra bag that you're going to grab every day and throw in your car and then you're going to take it inside when you come home for the day so if you want to find out what I have, don't go away. So starting off with the bag itself, this is kind of, it still surprises me to this day because when I first reviewed this bag, and I've had this bag for a while, I thought that VanQuest went a bit overboard with it. VanQuest is like a labyrinth of pockets. They love pockets. They can put pockets in freaking anything. They can put pockets in a freaking brick wall. And the Falconer 27 is like the epitome of pockets you almost want to like fill them each pocket up with something but if you do you're going to end up with a really freaking heavy bag that being said it's just the right size and i have continued to use this bag uh probably longer than a lot of the other bags that i actually liked better from a design standpoint <laughs> now in this first pouch this is probably one of the only redundant things that I have in here. And I mean redundant as in there was already one of these included in tier one. And that is a flashlight. I could just have some extra batteries in here. But uh, in this case, my preferred flashlight is not a tactical flashlight. This one is. This is the Olight M2T Warrior. And I like having that option because of other things that you're going to find later here in this tier two. Secondly, I have a actual multi-tool, not just like a Swiss Army knife style multi-tool. So this is the Leatherman Wave Plus. This is probably, I think, my preferred multi-tool that works for everybody. Also in this section, I have a ceramic rod. My, my preferred way for touching up knives and just for the fun of it because I throw this in my bag and every once in a while this thing darn thing does come in handy I have a small monocular this, now this is not a crucial item but 
I have a couple monoculars. I want to play with one. So this one is small. It's lightweight. So I went ahead and threw this thing in here as well. So that's all for this pocket. Now I should say that uh, you know the thought process that I went about in trying to figure out tier two is based on experience. Uh, what types of things have I had happen before? and what types of things have solved those problems. So I'm not gonna fill my bag with stuff that's never happened. I'm not gonna have a, a gas mask in here. I'm not gonna have some radiation detector or anything like that. Uh, you can't control everything. You cannot make a bag that will handle any freaking possible thing that ever happens to you. You do have to be somewhat flexible, uh, be able to think on your feet and improvise. These are just things that kind of help you along the way, but mostly you want to cover the things that uh, are going to happen a lot. So up in this pocket, all I have is like a notebook, a couple pens, and a Sharpie. Some things that get used a lot. Now let's open this up. Go into the second layer of the VanQuest Labyrinth O Pockets. Up in this section here, two things that have gotten used a lot over, over the years. Uh, so I've got some T-Rex tape and my preferred super glue, which is Loctite uh, gel super glue. These things fix a lot of things. They solve a lot of problems. I wanted some, uh, some thin but strong cord. So I've got some of this uh, Fifth Ops Kevlar trip wire from back when we did those perimeter alarms. So that comes in handy. And even though I don't anticipate this being like meant for solving wilderness problems, I'm a pyro. So I did include one small but comprehensive fire kit. Now this is taped up so you can't see what's inside it, but it's an awful lot of, you know, fast light fire starting tinder products. All right, getting over to this section, we're getting uh, more into the realistic uh, stuff that, that is going to come up more often. I have a power source in here. Yes, I had that small one in tier one, but backup for tier two is gonna be one of the bigger ones. So this is a 26800 MAH RAV power power bank with three ports. That does add some considerable weight to the overall package. Down here, this is like the not cool but necessary type stuff. Got a simplified hygiene kit, a lot of antibacterial moist wipes, uh, a bottle of ibuprofen. Uh, I have one of those freaking crazy uh, boots on now that you wear instead of a cast. Yeah, that's a whole big thing. That's why, that's why I didn't get on knife or death, because I basically jacked my tendons all up. So ibuprofen comes in handy. Some uh, spray deodorant and some toothpaste and a toothbrush. And then here, this is like the section that 90% of the people that watch any type of kit videos, regardless of what it is, comment about, and that is having some sort of energy. So I simply have some some like uh, some almond granola bars. My favorite quick carb free snack from Aldi's. This is basically like the off brand Slim Jims. And the ADHD person's Wonder Drug Energy Shots. So I, ha I have a minimal amount of energy there. Not survival energy, but it'll get you by. It'll uh, keep you from, you know, being bothered by being hungry or anything like that. So that's all we have in this section. Getting into the back section, we have one other thing that's adding some weight to this system, which you can take out. But uh, that is something to drink. You could just include a bottle and fill it up with water when and if you need it. 
but for all intents and purposes right now I went ahead and put a full uh, bottle of Powerade in there but that does like I said add weight it gives you something to freaking drink some leather palmed mechanics wear gloves uh, assuming that I'm not carrying a fixed blade from tier one I wanted to have at least one in here for tier two because it makes more sense in this in this tier and because this one is not specifically tailored to the outdoors what I went with is something that can work in the outdoors I've shown that but I just went with a cold steel uh, Recon Tonto in SK5 steel. So it's basically a combat knife design, but I have shown that you know it is capable of doing a lot of woods type tasks as well. Plus, if something happens to this knife, uh, I'm not going to be overly upset about it. And then the last thing in this section is personal first aid kit. I'm really big at having about having personal first aid kits in here, uh, at least for basic injuries, mainly cuts and that sort of thing. So band-aids, uh, gauze, sutures, there's a rat's tourniquet in here, and I know that rat's is not the preferred type of tourniquet uh, by any way, shape, or form, but it will work and it is compact. Uh, for a more comprehensive kit, which I generally will keep in my vehicle, uh, that's where I'll have like the soft T, uh, TW tourniquet. So there's only one other section to this bag. So the last item, I placed it in this spot because this is a place meant for storing it or carrying it. I'm not saying this is where you should carry it. I'm not saying how I carry mine. I'm just putting it there because I need a spot for it to be represented in tier two. So in the back section of this, that is where I have my CCW. So in this case, it is a Smith & Wesson shield uh, with two additional magazines in the back. So in this bag right here, I've got some of the basic things needed for handling most types of simple repairs. I've got things for basic maintenance, keeping my knife sharp, keep, keeping my electronics topped off. I've got the basics of calories, uh, ability to carry water, uh, simple things that come in all too handy like leather palm gloves and I have a simple method of dealing with you know, lower level type of injuries. That doesn't seem like a whole bunch, but just a couple little things like the larger battery pack and a full bottle of water adds a noticeable amount of weight. So there is no right way to set up something for tier two. It's going to be different from everybody and it's going to depend greatly on how much you're comfortable carrying around with you. Uh, we've talked about in other videos before I have kits I have things squirreled away hidden in my vehicle I've got things set up in my house I've got things kind of I've, I've, I've got something a little bit of everywhere but when it comes to something that's portable grab and go you know it comes down to what I consider the tier one and the tier two system and this is pretty much it for me where I live what my needs and risks are so in my personal time and place situation you know even that right there might be a bit of overkill based on the resources that I have available to me and something like that might be considerably more and more comprehensive if I lived in a, in a part of the country where things are a lot more spaced out uh, maybe you travel deeper into the mountains or you know you're 20 miles away from any kind of support I don't have that problem here. I can spin a dead cat over my head, throw it, and hit something that's gonna support me. A water source, a medical source, food source. I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty low key as far as risk levels here. But as far as the carry gun goes, you know, 
I live in a very low crime area. But that being said, you know, literally, uh, I mean, this made like national news. I want to say it was two years ago, you know, about a mile away from here, you know, on the, on the main strip there, uh, there was a restaurant, I want to say, uh, I forget, I forget how the, all the nationality stuff worked, but basically had what was considered like a domestic terrorist incident where this dude walked in a mile from here with a machete into this restaurant and started hacking people to bits. I mean, it's abs I mean, you just don't know. I mean, you, you don't, it, it doesn't happen until it does. And you don't want to be that guy where, you know, the, the one freaking day that you're just out, you know, minding your own business, you know, eating a sandwich and some crazy person walks in with a freaking machete. You're like, gee, maybe I should have brought my gun today. <laughs> so it's easy to be lax when you live in a non-threatening area, but stuff can happen. But at the same time, we have to balance what can happen with what is a reasonable expectation of problems. We don't want to walk around, you know, like we're ready for the zombie freaking apocalypse and there's like nothing happening. It's like, it's like you're at the mall, dude. Why are you, why are you carrying a freaking gas mask? So. When you get to this level, there's just there's just way too many different directions you can go. What I have, what works for me, could be completely, probably is going to be completely different from what you need. So don't take this video as, this is the way to do this. Nobody can make that video. Nobody can make that video. Not a video that applies to everybody. It just cannot be done. So that's all I got for right now. Uh, I said cover a couple simple topics that never get old need to be revi revisited every once in a while and get away from doing a couple knife reviews so chris from prepare my 101 thanks for watching be sure to click a like share and subscribe check the links down below uh that help support the channel and anything that stands out i don't know what did we cover in here you know, any, any of the key things that were, were in here that I might have a good link for, I'll go ahead and throw that down there below as well. So that's all I got for right now. See you next time.